Previously, we looked at the frankly absurd concept of German Super Heavy SPAA using the mouse and E100 hulls. If you haven't already seen it, I highly recommend you check it out after watching this video, but in it, I showed this vehicle on screen. Unlike the conventional AA we discussed last time, which used large caliber flat cannons to blast enemy aircraft, this monstrosity mounts a surface-to-air missile. Unsurprisingly, this one mounted on the E100 is not alone, with modeling companies jumping on the opportunity to also bolt it onto the equally rare Panther II chassis. In fact, the further I dug into this, the more Panzers with SAMs I discovered. Obviously, this is completely absurd for Germany in the 1940s, however, there are some shreds of truth woven into these outlandish SPAA. Before we consider the vehicles themselves, let's take a look at the supposed surface-to-air missile it carries. Known as the Rheintochter R1, this early anti-aircraft missile was developed by the Germans starting in 1942. This missile would be powered by a two-stage rocket system with the first stage booster generating 165,000 pounds of thrust for roughly half a second before detaching. During this short boost, it would reportedly propel the missile to nearly Mach 1 with a second stage taking over following the initial booster's removal. The next stage was considerably less powerful with only 8,800 pounds of thrust, but lasted much longer at around 10 seconds. As all this was happening, the missile would be guided towards its intended target through the use of a joystick system to manually control it remotely. Reportedly, it also could be guided via radar, but this was not heavily trialed. Upon reaching its target, it would deliver a 332-pound, 150-kilo explosive payload. I could not find any details on whether this would be detonated using some sort of proximity sensor or whether it would be triggered manually by the controller. As for the launcher, it was reportedly launched using either an inclined ramp or an 88mm flak gun mount converted for that role. Germany did have these operational prior to the end of the war, with 82 test launches, with 22 of those containing guidance equipment. However, these and the later R3 would be cancelled in early 1945, with none seemingly used in combat. It's worth mentioning that these were not some sort of super weapon developed by the Nazis. Germany, as well as other nations of that time, were working on their own guided missile systems with varying success. The United States alone had numerous programs, including early air-to-air -air missiles and even so-called assault drones which saw limited use in the Pacific. This may not seem directly relevant, but I point this out to show that contrary to popular belief, Nazi wonder weapons were not light years ahead of the Allied weaponry like some would lead you to believe. Jumping back to our missile carriers, this is where the historical basis for these SPAA vehicles come to an end and complete fantasy takes over. Although in theory, both the Panther II and E-100 chassis could indeed mount and withstand the launch of such a projectile, there are several reasons why this would never have been done. First and foremost is the practicality of the system. Not only are you taking a weapon still in its infancy, but you're placing it on top of one of two vehicles which themselves haven't entered production. Even with the reduced weight caused by the removal of the turret, the E-100 in particular would still cause major strain on its powertrain, all to reposition a missile which could have its launcher moved in the same manner as a typical 88 flat gun. The Panther II design could be argued as being slightly more practical, but you still have a vehicle which has different parts from other vehicles on the field with limited or non-existent parts available to repair it. Another reason why this would never be done is there just isn't a reason for it. It is true that later SAM systems would in some cases be mounted onto trucks or tracked anti-aircraft vehicles, but in the situation in which Germany found itself, and the intended target for these missiles, would not require the sort of mobility as later systems. In 1942 and later, German air defenses were focused not on fast-moving fighters or close air support aircraft, but rather the larger and slower Allied bombers lumbering overhead bombing critical German infrastructure. While it can be argued the same can be said for things like the Panzerholz modified to carry 88 flat guns, those weapons could also be used effectively against ground targets as well as aerial ones, something which would not be practical for a more advanced guided weapon. 
In reality, had these weapons been developed sooner or the war lasted long enough for them to see introduction, they would have almost certainly been used like the large caliber flak cannons launching from static AA mounts in defensive positions near potential bomb targets. As I was finishing the writing for this video, I ran into yet another variation of this concept, this time using the E-75 hull. This is even more absurd than the other examples as the E-75 hull was never even built and was a purely paper design. One of these designs also has made an appearance within an old PC game by the name of Warfront Turning Point. This one is mounted on a Tiger hull which is both equally unlikely and more plausible than any of the ones we've seen so far. If I can get the game running on my PC, I might check that game out on my gaming channel if you're interested. The E-100 and Panther II Rheintochter Movable Missile Launcher are by far some of the best examples of the complete nonsensical Napkenwaffe I have ever seen. They are certainly an interesting concept to consider and to many may seem like a plausible wonder weapon for Hitler's desperate defense in the later years of World War II, but as we have seen today, this is not the case. All that said, if you love goofy what-if models and want to add one of these to your collection, they seem to be readily available online still if you just have to have one. I'll include a link to any of them I can find below. Alternatively, you can get a more historical version with just the launcher and missile if you prefer. Just don't make me get out the spray bottle by going and posting about how this was a real proposal. Hopefully you enjoyed this look at another ridiculous fake tank. If you did, make sure to show it by hitting the like button and sharing it with your friends. Thanks as always to my channel members for supporting my content. I have a big announcement coming within the next couple weeks, which I'm hoping will both help support my content as well as giving more of you direct access to the research material I use while making these videos. If that sounds interesting to you, make sure to turn on all notifications after you hit the subscribe button and I will see you on my next video.